Hey, it's Jeff Canada with another newest, latest, best mini. And mere moments ago, in that room over there, I finished the main campaign of infamous Second Son on the PS4. And boy, I enjoyed the hell out of that game. Now, I still got a lot of stuff to do. It's a big open world game, and I certainly didn't do every single mission. I didn't clear the DUP out of every single section of Seattle. Uh, And I am anxious to continue to play it, but I wanted to give you my thoughts on the main story campaign and my feelings overall for the game, because I really had a great time playing Second Son. And I'm a fan of the infamous franchise, but I actually think... This one might be the best of the three. The thing it nails perfectly is that joy of having superpowers. This is a superhero game. I mean, I think Infamous has always been about being either either good or evil, and you can still certainly do that in this game, but there's a joy in having superpowers. There's a joy in becoming a conduit in the parlance of Infamous, And getting powers and the fact that your character is getting new powers throughout the entire campaign is uh, is pretty awesome and pretty exciting. And my favorite part of the game is is using the powers, is is figuring out different play styles based on whether I want to be good or bad. And uh, I think it's a fun skill based system that they they put out in in this game. Uh, One of my favorite open world games of all time. Well, my two favorites. Uh, And this game harkens back to both. So I'll mention them. Uh, the first is Red Faction Guerrilla. I think that is a hugely underrated game that came out last generation. Uh, it's a game I reference a lot because there was a, a joy to going around the uh, the Mars city in in this case and uh, destroying the the buildings and infiltrating the the um, bad guys' strongholds and clearing it out. And you do a lot of that in Infamous. A lot of the joy in what you're doing is clearing out each of these sections of the DUP, which are the, uh, the evil um, earthbenders of, of, the, uh, of the state-controlled militia. And uh, in, in fact, a lot of this game feels like Avatar The Last Airbender, which is something I love about it. I love Avatar The Last Airbender. And the beginning of the game definitely feels like you're a firebender versus earthbenders. And the earth powers are super cool. And the, having the enemies use powers against you and having it not just be a superhero versus military, having it really be a superhero versus other superheroes is super rad. But I got sidetracked. So Red Faction Guerrilla having the ability to figure out, okay, how am I going to infiltrate this thing? Which direction am I going to take? Which powers am I going to use, in, at least in Infamous's case? But it's, it's similar to that. I love that feeling of planning out your attack and deciding when you've powered up enough and when you've got enough uh, uh, of the abilities that you want to use in, in that particular case to take on the stronghold of the bad guys. Um, it's got that, and it's also got Crackdown, which is the other open world game that I love. Uh, it's got the aspect of feeling like you can dominate the city because of your traversal. Being able to get around, getting up, getting vertical in Crackdown and in Infamous is super fun and makes you feel empowered. Nothing says superhero more than being on the rooftops of the city and feeling like the fact that you're on the rooftops of the city is a benefit. It makes you feel more powerful. That's what superheroes are. They're guys up above the city and, and, and zooming along and using their, their ability to traverse the city to their advantage. And you certainly do that in Infamous. And it also has that thing in Crackdown where you go around and you collect orbs and power yourself up. Here they are shards, and I love the various ways that shards are distributed and how many of them there are to get in Infamous. I had a blast just tracking down the little, the little uh, um, what, what Amazon is going to start delivering their packages with, the little drones that carry shards uh, all around Seattle. I think that was not a... Uh, not a coincidence that that's uh, the, show, the the gameplay takes place in Seattle and and those are the ways that shards get moved around. But also there's preset ones. There's you can destroy these checkpoints that people have to go through to get shards. And also when you blast the big main DUP strongholds, the center of that, the core of that, is where all the best shards and powers lie. So it gives you incentive to infiltrate the strongholds. It gives you incentive to explore the city. I love that. I love the carrot on the stick of that because I always wanted to get more shards because I always wanted to power up my skills and expand out that skill tree, which is really cool in uh, in Infamous. So the loop of play is really fun and really well done, and the joy of using your powers makes it very satisfying because you have 
uh, you have different ways to take down enemies. I was playing the game as the hero side, so I was going good guy, and uh, all the non-violent ways to to restrain enemies, you could shoot them in the ankles, you could shoot them in the feet, and they would tie them up with certain powers. You could sneak up on them and subdue them from behind with other powers. Very, very cool. The story itself, I think, is is pretty good. I had a good time watching the actors in in this in this uh, piece. The voice acting and and um, motion captured acting is fantastic. And I I like the fact that the main character is a Native American, but it isn't it doesn't define him. It isn't what the story is about. It's not like uh, Prey was, where it's like hammering you over the head with it. And it, it's just his backstory, and that's great. Uh, it, it, I love that about it. I also think that uh, where it goes, there's some uh, big dramatic moments that happen that are, you know, uh, a little predictable, but certainly well done. And, and overall, a, a pretty decent story that had me engaged throughout. The game is marred big time by a major boss battle that is just dumb and that comes I don't know about a third of the way into the game and for me it just felt really out of place all of a sudden I felt like I was in Devil May Cry playing a completely different game and uh, it was frustrating and it wasn't fun and I was in an alternate universe and it just felt strange and and shoehorned into this game and I, I didn't think it played to the strengths of what this game had to offer in fact, all the boss battles were not that great, but I'm not a fan of boss battles anyway. I, I enjoyed much more the fact that I could just take on lots of enemies in certain situations, and that made the challenge uh, for me rather than just one boss that had a, a specific attack set. Okay, let me get to some spoilers. So if you haven't, if you don't want to know what happens in Infamous, it's not really what happens. I'm not going to talk about story spoilers, but this is uh, spoilers for for what is really special about this game. And that is the different power sets that you get. Uh, you start the game being able to suck smoke into your body and use it in a variety of fire powers, which is cool at the start. But you soon get, and this is where spoilers come in, more powers. You get the power of the neon, which is super rad and completely unique and different. Of course, smoke powers is different too, but we've seen fire elemental stuff over and over and over again. And here, this is something unique. When you get the neon, the whole game opens up, and I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm playing a superhero that I've never seen before. And then you get video powers, and that's even more cool. And each one is a different variety on the same theme. And then, the fact, the coolest trick that the game pulls is giving you the last power set at the end of the game. So even though you finish the the campaign experience, you've just been given this new toy to play with, and so it makes you want to keep playing the game. Uh, and the fact that the last boss battle makes you use new powers that you haven't used before is pretty clever and I think pretty slick. I wish those that power set was as fleshed out as the other two, or the other three, I should say, um, because it has a lot of potential and you don't really get to use it like the bad guys get to use it in the game, which I wish you could. I wish you could have all those applications of, of that, that power set. But still, the variety, the fact that it's constantly switching up, the, the carrot on the stick, as, as much joy as the character in the game is having finding those new powers, I was having as the player. It's a really fun, great-looking, feels-next-gen game on PS4. Yes, I had some gripes, especially about that boss battle. And uh, it's a relatively short campaign, although there's lots of other things to do in the game. I never really found any of the missions to be... Uh, any of the side missions to be particularly um, disappointing or or I would never want to avoid any particular kinds, usually in Assassin's Creed or other games. There's a certain mission types where it's like, ugh, I don't even want to do that. Uh, there's spray painting in the game, which is a, gets a little tedious when you do it over and over, but it's always interesting to see what the spray paint image is going to come out to be. You get to be a uh, your own little version of Banksy for a while. So overall... I feel like this is the strongest title by far in in on the PS4 and uh, certainly a game that's easy to recommend if you bought the PlayStation 4 at launch and are looking for something to fill your time. If you like third-person action games, this is a must-buy. If you like open-world games, this is a must-buy. Uh, it's really well done. It, it feels very polished and looks and sounds great. It'll show off your system, and I think you'll be having a blast with it if you can overlook some uh, some relatively minor quibbles. So that's my take on Infamous Second Son. I hope you're listening to the DLC podcast on 5x5 where Christian and I have been talking about that game and others every single week. And I hope you're uh, 
subscribe to this YouTube channel for all my NLB minis every single week. Thanks.